Thank you very much for this opportunity to address this cream of our profession here in uh, New York. Uh, I'm using this opportunity to show towards trends which are happening around us on the macro level, of which we are usually not aware, but which are going to fundamentally affect the way we are practicing public relations in the very near future. And the two trends I'm calling hyperglobalization and hyperdemocratization. Now, hyperglobalization in today's world, in this year, seems to be a little bit strange term because hyperglobalization started in 1990s and it went very fast, very high, but we are already seeing it if we are looking at trade, if we are looking at uh, financial transactions, that it's slowing down. If we observe it as trade relations only. We have politicians, not only in the United States, who want to scrap international trade agreements, who would like to build borders, who would like to uh, increase tariffs. In Europe, we are used to it for years already now, and, and <laughs> there is nothing new for us uh, in that. But the reality is that if we want to understand globalization, we shouldn't look only at trade numbers. We shouldn't look only at financial numbers. We should look into our pockets. This is where globalization is. And my first point is that if we want to understand globalization, we should look at this. This is penetration of internet. You know, we have entered the second machine revolution with, the, with digitalization, with the internet, which is fundamentally changing the way the world operates. Uh, my wife Anna and I arrived yesterday to New York from Shanghai, where we were at the conference on public relations at the Shanghai International Studies University. And in difference to this room, where I can see five, PC, five laptops, uh, some iPods, and uh, several people playing on phones, or let's say that they are tweeting <laughs> about this conference, <laughs> in Shanghai, practically everybody was holding an iPhone in their hands. And not only that, our host, which was spending most of her time with us, was actually using two iPhones simultaneously, like Pistoleros used to. You know, the old cowboys <laughs> in old uh, Western movies, they used to use two pistols at the same time. She was able to simultaneously use two iPhones practically all the time. Of course, there they have limitations on the, how much of the Google they can see. There is still Facebook is not there, Twitter is not there, but they have all kinds of other ways to go around. And these things are going globally. You know, uh, one of the paths, uh, the pathways that Syrian refugees had to Western Europe went through Turkey, Greece, the Balkans, through Slovenia, from, from where I'm from, and majority of people were shocked that Syrian refugees were using iPhones to navigate through Europe. So iPhones, not iPhones, I'm using iPhone here as a metaphor. In, uh, smartphones in general and the internet are changing globally our society. And here is what we should think when we are thinking about hyperglobalization. I'm thinking about globality. It's actually that we today really have transplanetary relations between people who can communicate with no regard to country borders. And we all know about each other. We are all interconnected. And we are going to go around any kinds of barriers governments will try to impose on us. We will find a way, as water always finds its, its way around. And we today can really talk about super territoriality, a globalized space in which we can simultaneously and instantaneously share our experiences, no matter where we live. And that's what we are doing all the time. And that's what hyperglobalization is all about. So governments will come and go. But the reality is that globalization is globalism. 
as these interplanetary relations that we have as humans among ourselves are here to stay. And there is nothing any government can do to reverse this trend. 